Hi guys. So, um, I'm really nervous. I'm super nervous because I know some of the things I'm about to talk about. Um, are looked down upon or rather frowned upon um, I'm just gonna take it slow because I want to articulate myself pro properly I want to be completely open and honest um, I'm nervous I won't lie I'm literally shaking um, okay so I'm going to start with this voice note. Né? I'm going to start with one of the voice notes. Um, I took a voice note of a meeting that I had with Piwe. Um, let me not say his name. With this guy. Uh, last year. Um, and this is... Oh, please, this phone mustn't do this to me now. Shh. Whoa! Please don't start. My other phone is wilding. Um, see, I cracked it. That's why it's acting up. Um, it's a voice note of him basically um, admitting that he, he, he basically, we had a meeting. Um, I'm going to start in the middle and then I'm going to work my way around the story. We had a meeting. I had a meeting with him last year. Um, I had threatened to expose him then and... I believe some of you may have seen it in my stories. And I said to him, he basically called me because he was panicking and he tried to get me to admit to things that didn't even exist, things that never even happened. Obviously, I'm assuming he was probably recording the conversation on the other side, trying to gather as much evidence for himself so that he could use it against me should this something like this ever happen. Um, eventually, I think he folded and we had a meeting. He begged me in this voice note. First, first, of, first of all, it's two voice notes. It's one voice note where he begged me to meet me so that we could resolve this issue. And then it's another voice note of the meeting that we had where he says, um, in his voice, he says, Wutsi, should I breach the contract in any shape, way, or form? Should I breach the contract in any shape, way, or form? Um, then I have the right. And now he's giving me permission, full permission, to do whatever it is I need to do, to go about this, to expose him. He says, like, I pee with my panga. I'm giving you full permission to do whatever it is you need to do. Okay, I'm the doing Susanna Lendo. I'm just going to pub. Should have actually just put this stuff aside first. Um, okay, I'm in the voice notes now. Okay. Uh, no, that's another one. Uh, I'm going to find it now. I remember I had named it. This was May of 2020. It was around, it was around March. March, yeah. It was March, yeah. Pure Mapanga. Ah ah. Ayole. Lena, it's been in a restaurant not far from my mom's place. This is the 2019 book. Uh, March. Uh, a WhatsApp group? Nope. Okay, I'll find it. I'll find it. I'll find it and I'll post it. So anyways, I met him in... I met Piwe in 2017. Um, I met him through a mutual friend of ours. More of his friend, actually, but I had worked with him in the industry. He's my ex. Who is this person to me? He's my ex. Um, he... We basically hit it off immediately. We dated for about two years. So in the beginning of the relationship, everything flowed very well. Um, we were pretty much, we were, we were like a normal happy couple. 
um, he told me he was a, pretty, a, a, a property developer. Um, he told me that he owned um, a couple of hotels and properties around Johannesburg and Cape Town and Eastern Cape. Um, um, and he, he drove very, like, like this, was, this was actually the first guy with money that I'd ever dated. I'd never dated a guy with money before. So it's crazy to me that his sister's saying that I was trying to ride a gravy train, but we're going to get into that. Um, and yeah, it was, it was a happy relationship. He drove very nice cars, you know, but he never actually had a place of his own. Um, he told me that he lived at his hotel where he worked. He lived at the hotel where he worked and I wasn't allowed to go there. I wasn't allowed to go see his apartment. So most of the time we spent time together indoors was at my place, at my apartment in Rodeport. Um, I had a small little two bedroom apartment there. Um, I used to love that apartment. And um, that's, and I paid rent there the whole time. Pure never paid, not one time. He never paid rent, not one time. There was never a single time that he, he ever contributed towards the rent in the year that he spent at my place. Um, anyways, um, so it was like shaky. You know, he, he claimed to be one thing, but in, in the beginning of the relationship, I, there's certain things that I could pick up. Like he would say, you know, um, he, would, he would say certain things and then forget that he said them. Um, and it, you know, when somebody tells you that he's, he's doing this or he's, he's, he's this type of person. And then next thing, turn off the comments. How do I turn off the comments? How do I turn off the comments? Can somebody please tell me how I turn off the comments? But how, how do I do that? Can somebody please tell me how to turn off the comments, please? Turn off comments. Yeah, but how? How do I turn off the comments? How, babe? Okay, guys, I see all your comments, but how, go to settings. Does this mean I have to end the live? Go to settings, no. Do I have to end the live? How do I turn off the comments, guys? At the bottom, three dots, three dots, comment section. Yes. Turn off commenting. Okay. Cool. So, um, so anyway, yeah, you know, when somebody tells you stuff and then it's a little shaky and then they forget that they told you this thing, it was stuff like that. Anyways, um, um, I started noticing issues with him um, when... Well, for me, the, the main issue in our relationship was the fact that I wasn't allowed to see where he lived. And he didn't want to introduce me to this business partner that he claimed to have at the time, um, who he was spending a curious amount of time with, which was this elderly Chinese lady. At the time, he told me that she was 66. And I just, I was very uncomfortable with their relationship. There was even this one time where um, I found messages, um, I found messages between them that were just baby baby and he told me that baby means um friend in in mandarin and i was like baby means friend in mandarin i googled it and i was like baby doesn't mean it's like no it's like a mandarin slang and i was like okay i was extremely uncomfortable with it so i gave him an ultimatum that you know he would have to do something about that situation that living arrangement there because i'm uncomfortable with him going back to this place where he he, he shares with his business partner that he calls baby and he's spending awkward times with and traveling with and all of these weird things and um, that was pretty much the main issue in the relationship. Um, and him constantly at my place and me not knowing where his toothbrush is or where his clothes are or where, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know where my man sleeps when he's not sleeping at my place where I live. Um, so that was just an issue for me um, that caused a great deal of the issue. That was, that was the, one of the first shady things that I, I picked up about him. Um, and then eventually um, he told me that he was going to leave um, that place. He was going to, you know, he, he was going to, um, he was going to move out. Um, and <sighs> God, I'm shaking. <sighs> he told me he was going to move out. And um, he told me that basically this lady was dying of cancer. And that's why it was complicated. He couldn't just leave. 
um, because she was sick and so he had to continue to be there to help take care of her and eventually you know he's going to find a way to like, move out of the place or whatever um, naturally that never happened but there was a point where he had promised me I obviously didn't know at the time that it was one of his many lies but he had promised me that um, we were going to get married the next the next year we're going to have children and we went um, we went house hunting in Hartis because he always said that he wanted to live outside of Joburg he never wanted to live in the inner city because he didn't like like the noise and stuff so he always wanted a place far away from Joburg so we went house hunting house hunting in Hartis um, and then that fell through as well and it was just weird shit after weird shit after weird shit now here's where the financial issues come in I feel like I'm flip floppy right now. I'm so nervous. I don't know what to do with myself. Whew, there's so much to tell in the story. So at some point in our relationship, um, the first financial issue, at some point in our relationship, um, Pua took my car. He took my BMW. Um, he said that he was going to go fix it. So my BMW had a dent. It had a... Um, a dent on the side, on the left side, and then also the mirror was like, it looked like he. And so he took my car, he took my BMW, so naturally I, you know, I let him take it. Thank you, my man's gonna do something nice for me, you know? Um, I have not seen my BMW since. That was in 2017. I have not seen my BMW since. Shortly after that, um, Pierre and I, not shortly after, a couple of months later. I'm going to try and summarize this the best way I can. That's the first issue. I'm still going to get into the BMW issue again. That's the first issue. This is this what's part of the reason why I'm doing this live. What part of the reason why I'm exposing him. And I'm going to explain how now the debt that I'm carrying as a result of that BMW that I haven't seen in five years, I'm still paying for it today. I'm still paying for that BMW today. But I have not seen my car in five years. So he took my car to Toy Lungis. It turns out he gave it to his cousin. I don't know what his cousin did with it. And it, it has been a, a wild goose chase ever since. How he came about getting me the Range Rover. It was New Year's Eve. We went to a party that one of his friends was hosting in Centurion. And on our way back, we got into a fight. And um, I can't even remember what the fight was about. But things were already tense. Anyway, we got home, we were drunk, we slept on it, woke up in the morning. And mind you, this guy had laced me with alcohol. We had literally like, he had bought me like booze after booze after booze at this party. So when we got home, I was drunk. So he wakes up. So the, the, what he was used to is that every morning I would wake up and make him breakfast. Every single morning I would wake up, make him breakfast, iron his clothes, put them on the bed, shine his shoes. I was literally this dude's cheerleader, maid, best friend, you name it, I was everything. I was fully committed to this man. Um, so that was what he was used to. Every morning I'd wake up, make him something to eat, breakfast in bed, some coffee, some cereal, whatever. And so this particular morning, and YouTube was after the New Year's Eve party, so I was drunk. So I woke up, um, so he woke me up, sorry, he woke up early and he obviously he's hungry. He's like, babe, I'm hungry. And I'm like, I'm still hanging, you know? I'm like, hey, babe, there's food in this fridge. So I, I'd cooked the night before. Um, I had made chicken and a salad. That's another thing. I was monitoring his diet. Um, so we went, he wasn't allowed to eat takeouts because he wanted to lose a certain amount of weight. So I monitored everything that he ate. Um, and I cooked everything. Most things. If we, went out, if we didn't go out on a date or whatever. So um, this particular morning, I was, I was hanging. And he... he ooh, I haven't thought about this story in a very long time. I actually... I actually haven't thought about, I actually haven't spoken about this in a long time. Um, he woke me up and he's like, he, he, he wanted something to eat. So I told him I left the chicken and the salad. All he had to do was literally take it out of the fridge. I'd cling wrapped it. I'd been in Pagel and Pagel. I had dished out the chicken for him in the salad. All he had to do was literally take it out of the fridge, pop it in the oven, pop it in the microwave and eat. And I was like, hey, babe, I'm tired. There's chicken and salad in the, in the fridge. You know, like I'm, I'm exhausted. I wanted to go back to sleep, and I could sense that he was put off, but he didn't say anything. He's like, "Oh, Kalewala is like, oh, babe, I'm hungry," and I'm like, "Well, there's food in the fridge that I prepared yesterday before we left." Um, and so, yeah, he went. He warmed up the chicken. He ate. I went back to sleep, and I think I woke up like an hour or two later, 
Wokapebe Utens. He's upset. Fine. I know why he's upset because I didn't want to wake up and make him breakfast. Cool. Woke up, I started cleaning. Um, and yeah, I started getting ready for the day. We were going to go to another friend of his party that day because it was New Year's Day. And then um, as I was cleaning, he's like, what did I do to deserve this kind of treatment from you? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, basically, I do everything for you. And I'm thinking to myself, everything for me? I wake up every day, I make this man breakfast. I am out here taking his family members out. And on most of those dates, I pay. I, you know, like I was a committed girlfriend. Every aspect of his life I was basically involved in. Well, almost every aspect of his life. And this nigga didn't even help me with rent, even though he was living in my apartment. This nigga had taken my car, had not seen it for months, saying that he was going to fix it, had not seen it. Um, you know when somebody like gaslights you like beyond gaslighting? And he's like, yeah, but every time we go out, I pay. And I'm thinking to myself, my dad, I could pay for my own dinners. Like, thank you, but you know? So anyway, long story short, guys, we had a back and forth argument and he's like, I do this. And I'm like, I do this and da, 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 da. Just one of those toxic arguments that any respectful couple should never have. And eventually he made the threat. He said, he said something on the long, I want to make sure that I, I quote him word for word. He said something along the lines of, you're actually pissing me off now. And I said to him, if you lay a hand on me, and next thing I remember, I blacked out because he had pounced on me from across the room. Next thing I was standing, next thing I was on the floor, next thing I'm blacking out again. And I'm seeing him like, what are you doing? Blacking out again. Like the gentleman black out, he's hitting me in the face. Like I'm seeing stars. At some point I remember he had his knees on my shoulders and he had his hands around my neck. <laughs> and I said to him, you're killing me, you're gonna kill me. And he said, I ain't bulaling fundi, this is fundo. And he carried on beating me. We started this argument on one side of the room. By the time he stopped beating me, I was on the floor in the bathroom and he was standing above me. And he said again, why, what did I do to deserve this? Why are you making me become this person? And I remember I was just crying, telling him, please just stop, please stop. And so this is how the Range Rover came about. After he had beaten me up for the first time, he felt guilty. That was in January. The Range Rover was not a Valentine's Day gift. The Range Rover he was bought in January. In fact, for the first few days after he had beaten me up, I have the pictures. I'm going to post them after this on my stories of my eye and my face that day. After this happened, my mom came and she, um, she counseled us. I didn't call the cops because at the time I, I was in love and I, I believed him when he said he was sorry. I mean, he was immediately remorseful. And so I forgave him. And, um, and so my mom came, she counseled us, he left that day. And what, here's what's crazy. After he beat me up that day, I still wanted him. I still wanted to sleep next to him. I, I didn't long for my mom. I didn't long for my friends. I longed for him. I wanted the person who had just beaten me up to comfort me. I know it sounds fucked up. Maybe I am fucked up, but I longed for him. And so it did not even take me that long to forgive him. Um, he was back the next day, he brought me flowers and he'd given me, he'd given me the car keys to a G-Wagon that he was driving at that time, a white G-Wagon. He claimed it was his, I know it belonged to his Chinese girlfriend, the elderly woman um, who actually owns all of the hotels and the properties that he, claims was, that he claimed were his. And um, he left me the car, he was like, I can drive it around for the next couple of days. And then he left me his card and, and a bouquet of flowers. And um, he left and I felt bad when he left. I still wanted him to come back. In fact, I called him and I was like, you can come back tonight. Shameful, I know, but yeah. Yeah. And then um, 
Shortly after that, a few days later, he was like, let's go look at some cars. Um, we were back to normal. Within, within the first three days, we were actually back to normal. Didn't take long. I did not hold him accountable for what he'd done at all, which is probably why he carried on doing it later on in the relationship. And I, I kind of blame myself. I take accountability for the fact that Nam, I did embolden him by not making him accountable for what he'd done. To a point where the, the second time he did it, he didn't even feel bad. In fact, he started saying, he started to feel like emboldened by it. Like, oh, she does this all the time. She cries. <sighs> we'll get into that. But anyways, that's what brought about the Range Rover. That's why he got me the Range Rover. The Range Rover was basically a gift because he felt guilty about what he'd done. And in, in, in retrospect, now that I think about it, it was probably a gesture to kind of shut me up. It was probably a, a means of him to shut me up. Um, and so when he bought the Range Rover back, this, my BMW still had not returned, by the way. It had been a couple of months since he'd taken my BMW, is it to your lungis? It still had not come back. So he got me this Range Rover. So we went, to, so how it, how it happened is we went to go look. He told me that we're going, he's going to go test drive this new car. He knew that a Range Rover was like one of my favorite cars ever. And in fact, a couple of days before he had said something along the lines of, I want to get you a car. And I was like, no, don't get me a car. Let's work on our plans for next year. We want to get married next year. We want to have children. So instead, let's move out of my little apartment and get a place together. And then yeah, once we've settled those expenses, we'll think about getting things like nice cars and whatever. He's like, no, I'll do that and get you a car. He insisted. So when he was like, let's go look at these cars. Let me go look at this, test, this car on a test drive. I was like, okay, cool. I kind of had like, you know, a hunch that he was probably going to get me this car. But yeah, I didn't think he, he would do it that soon. So we test drove the car. You know, I told him I liked it. It was really nice. Next thing, he's like, it's yours. And I was like, oh my God. I'm sure you guys saw all those pictures when I was like, oh my God, wow. I was really, really happy. I was truly grateful. It was actually one of the happiest moments of my life because that was my dream car. Um, and I was grateful. I was very, very grateful. And then, um, yeah, so he, he told me that I needed to do the paperwork myself because he was putting it in my name. So the arrangement was he was going to pay for the Range Rover for three months. At the time, he was doing a deal in Tanzania with a, 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 a Tanzanian tycoon where he was developing property. I'm sure you guys will also see if you track back my, my, my um, posts. There was a time where I went to Tanzania with him on like a little mini vacation. He was actually developing property there. And then he told me I should come and then we turned it into a vacation because he knew how much I loved Tanzania and I loved the beaches. You know, everybody knows that I'm like, I'm like part, partially a hippie girl. So he knows I love water. You know, I love beautiful scenery. So he was like, come through, we'll, you know, we'll turn it into like a vacation. So anyways, he was brokering this deal in, in Tanzania with this um, Tanzanian billionaire tycoon or whatever, where he was developing some property. He was developing some hotels alongside the, some of the islands there. Um, that deal fell through. Um, he didn't even tell me about it. So he told me that he was waiting for a huge payout from this deal. So he was going to pay for the car. He was going to give me money for, to pay for the car for three months. So he was going to lease it for three months. And then afterwards, um, this money, when this money comes in, he's just going to pay off the car in full. And then yeah, I can keep the, you know. So I agreed. I believed him. You know, like this guy is like no one I've ever met. I've never met somebody who literally lies on cue. Like this guy can literally make up a lie about anything at any point. About anyone anyhow, and it will be believable. Anyways, so he, he, um, he assigned the, the paperwork for the car, um, got the car. So first month he paid the money into my account and then MFC would take the money from my account. Second month he, you know, transfer money into my account and then MFC would debit my account. So that's how it worked. So three months was the agreement. And then I would, he would get this big payout from this deal that he was brokering. The deal never happened. So three months turned into four months, turned into five months, six, seven, eight months. On the eighth month, we broke up. Um, and that's when he stopped paying for the car. Meaning now when MFC debits me, they're going to debit whatever money is in my account. So this is where the bump started. So MFC is now debiting Imali in my account that I have put aside for my life, for my rent, for my daily expenses, my money now. Ne? And this, has been, this is what has been happening. Okay. This, is, this is why 
the situation is like, this, this is what I mean when I say this guy's put me in debt. So now I'm paying, I'm not only paying for the Range Rover, I'm also paying for the BMW. So now I'm paying for two cars. Crazy part of the story is that there was a point where we actually had an argument about this at some point. And this guy literally told me, what you're afraid of is, that because I kept asking him, I kept badgering him about my BMW. And he was like, but I told you that it's in a safe place and that you're going to get it back. But I'm like, but I'm like you told me that you're going to fix it. You're going to return it. it ha I haven't seen it since. And he was like, no, you have a car. You have a Range Rover. And I was like, yeah, but this Range Rover, you haven't paid it off. And he literally said to me, I will never forget. This man literally with a straight face said to me, what you're afraid of is you're afraid that at some point I'm going to make away with your, range, with your BMW and then stop paying for the Range Rover. And then now you'll be liable for two debts. Is that what you're afraid of? And in the back of my mind, the first thing that came to mind was yes. But because I, I didn't want to come across as, uh, you know, like a, a, a girlfriend that didn't trust him or was, you know, disloyal. I said, no, babe, I trust you. I know you would never do that to me. It's like, so what's the issue? Biggest mistake of my life. Um, so that's how the Range Rover came about. I'm going to do this the best way I can, guys. I'm, I'm literally telling you this, sto this, this story in drips and drabs. I'm gonna, it's hard to explain because this is like something that spanned over like a, a, the course of five years. So I'm, I'm trying. I'm nervous. I'm, I'm going to try and explain it the best way I can. So let's park the Range Rover story. So now we know what's happened with the BMW. We know what's happened with the Range Rover. Amongst all of this, this man tells me that um, I should leave my label my music label. I was signed to Gallo at the time. He told me that I should leave my music label and he was going to register a label and sign me. So Nyanike, love of my life, future husband, I trust anything that he tells me. I left my label um, and I, he registered a label and I, at the time it sounded so, so romantic, like your man literally registered a whole music label just to sign you. You know, it kind of sounds like, whoa, love lives here does it um registered this label um um and then um he asked me to get some people to help him i sourced the guy a friend a friend of mine he's since passed away so i don't want to mention his name but he was the one who was helping us you know like get like um um licensing get a licensing label get my music on on spotify and apple and things like that and doing our pr and stuff like that and then he also i also sourced um he sourced some producers that he still has, it. oh guys, hey, oh hey, this man has made a mess of my life. So as we figure up, so you saw some producers, these young producers, very talented guys. We um, started recording my album, my previous album, Easy Pingomo, um, um, and yeah, I was in studio every night. Sometimes I'd even sleep in studio. Um, we worked very hard on it, and we came up with a really good album. Um, I had sourced a photographer at the time who was, and this photographer was going to, he shot me for free. But this guy, Upiwe, had already sent the album through to Musica without my permission, without me even agreeing to the, the cover. And he used the cover that was used for a previous album. So anyways, um, yeah, signed to his label. We did the album. Um, um, I, I recall only doing one gig with him, and it was at Soweto Theatre. Um, Piwe got paid for that gig. I never got a cent from it. I think they paid about 30 or 40,000 rands. I never got a cent from that gig. He got paid. The agreement with this, with me signing to his label was that he was going to invest 450,000 rands in my project, in the Sipping Goma album, meaning that this 450,000 rands is going to go towards videos, PR, you know, you know, all the stuff that you need to, you know, put an album out there and make it big. Um, never shot any videos even the photographer was sourced by me and he shot me for free because he was a friend of mine um never paid the producers till this day i don't have access to my music i can't perform my songs via backing track today because i don't have access to the to the separates so i can't perform the music from that album except for Zupungom. Zupungom is the only backing track that i actually have access to and the producers refused to give me access because they were not paid Therefore, they refuse to give me my separates. Right now, my album is not available on any... If you go stream Zipping Gomo right now, Ozifuman, it's not on Spotify, it's not on Apple Music, it's not on any major streaming platform because there are some, there's some paperwork that people did not do. 
with regards to Dynasty. And that was, this Dynasty Entertainment was his label that he registered. This guy literally turned into a Quincy Jones during the course of this whole him working on my music. Today, he tells me that he doesn't know anything about this, this music thing. Today, I'm amnesia at, at my expense, which means I'm losing out on money. Which means when I do gigs, I have to do all my older songs. I can't perform songs from that, from that album today. And I can't make money off of streams, off of anything today from that album. Because I can't have any paperwork yet. I don't know how many times I have tried to have this discussion. Some people just don't understand the language of decency. I did not want to even have to do this. Me doing this, this live is beyond me. I did not want to do this. I did not want this to come, it to come to this. This is the last thing I wanted to do. He knows, this man knows how much I value my privacy. He knows how much I want to keep my private life away from the public. He knows. And so he was banking on that. He was depending on the fact that Munewa Utandi privacy yak, which is why I'm gazelle. Which is why I'm gazelle. Yeah, now he's on Instagram buying Maybachs, buying his, his step or daughter-in-law's imodo. I don't know where my car is. Where is my car? The last time, the last chance I gave Upiwa, he had begged me, I'm going to find this voice note and I'm going to post it after this. If I can't find it right now, I'm post in my story so that you see I'm not lying. Upiwa begged me to meet, begged to meet up with me to resolve this issue, to resolve the issue with both cars, to resolve the issue. Oh, wait, Yima, I'm going too far. I, I'm, I'm missing one more story. Hey, how could I miss this one? So, sorry, I need to, I need to track back. When Pua stopped paying for the range, the money was being debited from my account. Man. So your MFC is taking money out of my account. The money that I had in my account at that time was money for rent. So in Jengo, I a range. I my rent MFC. So eventually, I got evicted from my place. After I got evicted, I called his parents and his dad had him come over on the day that I was getting evicted. On the day that I was getting evicted, not after, sorry. On the day I was getting evicted. And um, my whole family was there helping me, my brother, my, mom, my mother, my aunt, my friends, my brother, my other brother, uh, my older brother and my younger brother. Um, was, they were helping me move. Um, so Piwe came and he off offered to take my stuff and put it in storage. And the agreement was he was going to put my stuff in storage until I found a new apartment to live in where I could put all my stuff in. Right. And I told him I'm going to move. To go, I'm going to move into my aunt's place. I'm going to live with my aunt because my aunt had like a tiny little apartment at the back of her home. Um, and so I told him I'm going to move to my aunt's place um, until I find myself a place to stay. And he was like, cool. Whilst you're at aunt, I'm going to pay until you find yourself in your apartment. I was like, cool. Um, so he came, he put my stuff in storage. Um, it was at store age here on 14th Avenue. My heart always breaks when I, when I go past there. He put my stuff in storage. This is the majority of my things. So I had a two bedroom apartment. It was fully furnished. This is stuff that I'd accumulated over the years. So this is my couches, my TV, my, I had a dining room table. I had a fridge that I had gifted myself on my birthday. It was a 30,000 rand fridge. Guys, it fridge am yai tetanam. It fridge am yai ngelela on your commands. It fridge am. I gifted myself that fridge. And anybody who knows me knows how I feel about kitchen utensils because I love to cook. Cooking is like very therapeutic for me. If you follow me, if you follow my stories, you'll know. To cooking is my thing. So I had some really dope ass things. I had some expensive ass pots from Le Creuset or Le Creuset, however you, you pronounce it. I had a lot of things. I had pots. I had, you know, it was a fully furnished apartment. I had, you know, a bed. I had, um, isn't those, um, isn't it like, isn't easy, like the second bedroom actually wasn't even like, there wasn't a bed in the second bedroom. I used it as a closet just because I had so many clothes and shoes and things like that. Um, so everything that you can think of that could fully furnish a two-bedroom apartment, that's what I had. And that's the majority of the things that he put in storage that day. This man stopped paying for my stuff in storage. Ne? And he never told me. He registered his name at my storage, at the storage. So Opale, his name, his phone number, his email, his address. Ne? So Jengoba, he stopped paying. This, the, the storage is sending him messages like, you have to pay or we're going to do this. You have to pay, we're going to do this. They're sending him all of this stuff. 
I, mean, I have no idea. I pinned Koyo. I took the little things that I took with me. I'm thinking all my things are safe. My dishwasher, my washing machine, my this, my fridge, my TV, on Kindle. Because my aunt's apartment was already fully furnished itself. So I didn't have to take much. I think I took like one pot, a few clothes, and, you know, just a few things. Because I wasn't planning to stay there for long. I ended up staying for a while. But, okay, whatever. Um, this man stopped paying after a month or, or two months. And I can't recall. I'm going to have to check the documents now. He stopped paying after a month or two months. And he did not tell me. So when by the time that I found out my stuff had been auctioned off, everything that I had was auctioned off. Like everything. My clothes, my shoes, my stuff. Yon Quinto. Everything. Think of everything you have in your home. And then all of it is gone. This person was receiving messages from the storage. He was receiving warnings after warnings after warnings. What tool what to do? Never said anything. At the end of the day, I think I was owing something like six or seven thousand rand at that storage. I could have paid that. All he had to do was tell me, I'm no longer paying for the storage. Go sort out your storage. Fine, I would have paid it. For what I had, I would have paid it. I lost over 500,000 rands worth of belongings. I lost things that I will never get back. Things that I could never buy. I had this beautiful black book that I've been like collecting memories in it and pictures. I had a picture of my great grandmother. My, yeah, my grandmother's grandmother, my great grandmother, um, black and white picture from like the 1910s. Just some things that are just so priceless that I will never get back. And, um, and yeah, I, I lost, I lost everything. I pretty much lost everything that day. I called Piwe and I told him what had happened and he was like, no, don't worry, I'll sort it out. I tried to call him again, blocked. Blocked or phoned off or whatever the case was. But okay, I couldn't get a hold of him after that. One of his many disappearing stunts. He does that. When he starts to feel invincible or whatever, he does this thing of just ignoring texts and calls. And for him, I can see why his sister's wiling was wiling today. Because I know that he tells them a different story to the things that he does to me. He doesn't tell them the truth. So he'll be like, oh, Mune was like the other day, Utem Nam extorting him for asking for, for him to pay for the things that are being debited out of my account today as a result of the debt that he put me in. I never wanted that Range Rover. What I wanted was a future for us to build together. I never wanted that car. He insisted on it because he knew. Can I tell you guys, I didn't even want to post that Range Rover. I didn't even want to post it. The only reason why I posted in February is because Nguye Owatikuma posted. Institute was going to help me with my career. It's like, I'm just I'm helping you with your album. Yeah, this is going to add, it's going to spruce up your album. It's going to add hype. So post. And Yanni it did. It did help. I thought it was a very smart move. It made sense. It was logical. But I didn't want to post because he knows my privacy is everything to me. I didn't want to post. I'm not flashy about my, about my life. And I, I don't have much, and I'm not ashamed of that. I saw his sister today posting that, you know, she lives in Waterfall and in, uh, my apartment was run down. I have no shame in my rundown apartment. It's my apartment. I earned it. It's run down, but it's mine. I worked for it. I have no shame in that. I have no shame in the little things that I have and the cheap things that I have. I have no shame. I walk at H&M, as a surprise, with my head held high, babes. I wear my cheap clothes and my cheap dundons with pride. Because I have no shame in my life. Yeah, I'm not used to Louis Vuitton bags and this and this and that. I'm not ashamed of that. Those are not the things that matter to me. This is specifically why your brother fell in love with me. This is specifically the things that he used to say he loved about me. So for him to do this to me, of all people, is beyond shocking for me. And the arrogance that this man has about it today, the last, the, the, the last conversation I had with him telling him i sent him a screen grab of my banking app to say this is the amount that came out of my account this is the amount that came out of my account so when i expect you to pay for certain things it is because now i've been debited here 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 and here e twenty five thousand rands e fifteen thousand rands e nfc is still debiting me today the bmw is still debiting me today i've given back my range rover by the way and said i don't have a car guys i have a car but i don't have a car today this nigga's driving around in maybachs and he has my car. And I sound crazy. I'm crazy, Mna. I'm the crazy one for wanting to speak out, for wanting to stand up for myself. This man physically abused me for the entire duration of our relationship. 
And I think that was the trigger for me today. I actually thought twice about this, this live. I actually, I actually wasn't going to do it. I said I was going to do it and then I was like, actually not. But when I saw his sister whiling, the disrespect, it's kind of like it adds insult. Inju what is it? It adds fuel to the fire. It adds, um, I'm so tense. It adds don't, don't to insult, insult to injury. Because I wasn't going to do this. I actually thought tires because this is not, he knows this, this is not something I want to do. But I can see, Ogba, me being quiet, me being silent and nice about this whole situation and choosing to do this the right way, it's, it's not working. I don't know how many times this nigga and I have had meetings where he's like, okay, yes, I'm going to do A, B, and C. I'm going to post it right now. Those meetings, I'm 90, I recorded all of them. Where he begs me, begs me to meet with me, begs me to solve this issue, reassures me. He signed a contract. Mm -hmm. He signed a contract mm -hmm. that I'd drawn up at that meeting that stated he's going to take care of this, 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 and that. And, and I said to him in that meeting, if you breach anything in this contract, you are giving me the right to go about this as I please. You're giving me the right to go and expose you on Instagram because I'm actually yeah. sick of this. What do you know? Okay, cool. No problem. He said, okay, no problem. I'm going to post it. Right after this live, I'm going to post it. Since he wants to act like, now he wants to sue me for defamation. It's not defamation, my guy. You gave me the go-ahead. You told me that if I, if you ever started, I said to you, if you ever start ignoring my messages or ignoring my calls again, and you do you're all this crap that you've been doing for the past, I don't know how many years, where you don't want to give me back my car, you don't want to resolve these issues, you don't want to pay me back. There was even a year where I had to, two years, where I had to pay for Uber myself. And then last year, he started to pay for my Uber. So here's how he went about paying back, just in case he starts, because I know he's going to start lying and making it seem like he paid me back more, he paid me back all my money. He didn't. So after we had the meeting, um, we agreed that he was going to pay me back 20,000 rands a month. Um, so this is what it's based on. He told me at that meeting, and like I said, I have it recorded. So if he even tries to lie, I have it recorded. He told me at that meeting that um, he didn't have money. He didn't have a lot of money to pay me back, to pay me back for all my belongings that I lost in storage. So the things that I'm holding him liable for is the, my, my stuff that I lost in storage, um, which was, which I audited, I, I think I audited something close to the amount of 500 and something thousand. Um, he told me that he couldn't afford that 500,000. All he had in his account was just a little up above 300,000 and he was going to get more, but all he could afford to pay me back was 20,000 rands a month. Uh, all he could afford to pay me back was 150,000 rand at best. And, and, and he said he was going to pay it in installments of 50,000 rands a month. Your 20,000 rands a month. Um, and I agreed. And I admit this was very idiotic on my part, but I agreed. I take accountability for that. I regret it very much. Because now that I know what I know, you know, it's kind of like shit. But I agreed, okay, to low 150,000 rand. Mind you, he owes me at least 500,000 rands worth of isn't. But yeah, I agreed low 50, 150,000 rands. In fact, a total of 175,000. And he paid that back in 20,000 rands installment. He still owes me 5,000 rands, by the way, because that last 5,000 rands, and then the agreement was he was going to pay for my Uber until such time that he was going to return my car. And that's what he did up until from March last year, up until December. Or was it? No, up until? Yeah, I think he paid up until December. Yeah, I think he paid up until December. And then in December, at some point, 30,000 Rand was debited from MF MFC. I sent him the screen grab. I sent him my private banker's number so that he could confirm. Like I said, I'm not going to tell a single lie. I sent him the notification that the 30,000 Rand you put me in my, out, out of my account. It's MFC. It's to do with the car. You said you're going to handle all matters to do with that debt. And out of that, he only paid me back 18,000 Rand. And we agreed that, okay... 30,000 rand was debited. Mind you, that he owes. That he owes. That he owes. 25,000, that 50,000 that have been debited from my account that he still has not paid. Well, even this Uber, well, even him paying for the Uber, I paid for my own Uber as a result of me not having a car for two years. Him paying for this Uber for you doesn't even cover that two years. It doesn't cover that two years. So he, he paid 20,000 rands um, installments up until white low 170,000 minus 5,000. He still owes me 5,000. Um, so I'll give him that. There's still the issue with the BMW. Where's my car? There's still the issue with the Range Rover. Why have you not paid that debt that I'm still being debited for? Izola was debited 15,000 rands from the MFC. 
Kuzo funi gani amjo vule nyika account woku. So, yeah. And on top of that, I never even held him liable for the mess that he made of my career. He never paid for a single video. This man agreed to putting in 450,000 rent to my degree. He made me leave my label to sign to his label, promising me, me that, promising me that he was going to invest 450,000 rands in my career. He still has not paid my producers. I cannot perform my music. My music is not, you, you won't find my last album, Easy Pingom, anywhere, except for probably YouTube, and it's just a few songs now, Con. This nigga has made a mess of my life. music career. Because guys. Dealing with the issues. And this is just this is just the cream of the crop. This is like the cherry on top. There's so much more to the story. I'm literally giving you guys like a cherry on top. But that's the gist of it. And that is my objective right now. Is to get my car back and for him to get me out of this debt both with BMW and MPC, because I'm not going to be liable for a car that I have not seen in five years. Why am I still paying? Why am I still paying? I am literally working my ass off trying to get my career back together, and I still have to worry about debts that I did not incur. And this nigga is... You claim to be so rich, then give me my car back. And if you don't have it, if you don't know what your cousin did with it, or if you guys... In fact, his, his cousin's girlfriend told me something the other day. She said that she suspects that they probably at the time were running low on cash. And because he had planned to be with me, in any case, they just probably thought, okay, we could just use Munel's car to you know, sell it, generate some income, and then use that income to make more money or broker a deal or whatever. Because Nyanige, where is my car? Where is it? I've been on a wild goose chase, excuse after excuse after excuse. It has been five years. Where is my car? So, so yeah, that's the gist of the story, guys. There's more to the story, but like, honestly, like, I hope, I hope I've explained it. I, well, I hope I've explained it properly. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I am beyond frustrated. Now this guy is saying that he's accusing me of extortion. 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 Yo. Blackmail. Like, the situation is beyond me. Like, I was borrowing money last year. Like, I have never had to borrow money. I have always been self-sufficient. I had to move back home. I had to move back home. Because, hey, guys. At some point, even when I wanted to move out of home, no landlord or, or real estate agent would take me because of how bad my credit is, because of all of this debt. This man physically abused me. He manipulated me. He conned me out of two cars. He cost me everything that I had, that I had worked hard for. Like, there are things, yo. Oh, like, I look back on my life and I'm just like, I really, really missed the life that I had before I met this man. Sometimes I even wonder, like, to deserve a man to treat me and then even have the audacity to be so arrogant about it. The arrogance that Upiwe displays when I try to talk to him, when I try to reason with him. I say, I don't have to do this. We're agreeing to this because, you know, we're both, I'm, you know, I, this is not something that I have to do, basically. I'm not liable. You're not liable for giving me back my car that you took, that I'm still paying for? Like, I have never met anybody like this guy in my entire life. And today, it's, 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 I'm actually grateful that I, I did this because I've received so many messages from people who are like, me too, me too, me too. Siamazi, he's done this to me too. He's done this to me too. I am literally shocked and appalled by the... Like, you, you would think that he couldn't surprise me any further. I'm shocked. This guy is nowhere near the type of person I thought he was. And I think part of the reason why I kept giving him chance after chance to fix this is because I was still fixated on the person that I thought I was with back then. I honestly thought that this guy had some decency in him. 
I was so convinced that this man, there's no way that he's going to let this happen. Surely, surely there has to be a decent bone in this man's body. Surely as a man, he, he understands the predicament that he has put me in. Surely he understands how he has inconvenienced my life. And surely, surely if I reason with him, he will make it right. Here I am today, five years later. Five years later. And in a motto. And in a, hey. And to think that I dedicated so much of my life to this person. This guy still goes around. I've actually heard that he still goes around telling people that he bought me a car. He's still using me to make himself look good. He still talks about me. He still tells people that, yeah, you know, Manoa, I dated her. I bought her a car. What? <laughs> so that's how that happened. So essentially, I bought myself that Range Rover because I am the one who ended up paying for it. And I'm the one who's still paying for it. So um, I'm going to put my comments on now. <sighs> how do I do this? Oh, it's your comment in one. So yeah, that is my story. Well, that is partially my story. Um, it's been really hard, guys. It's been very, very hard. And sometimes I just feel like because like, you know, I'm a strong person. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm all about my work. You know, I, I work hard, but it's, it's. Sometimes it just feels like because I have like this strong character, this like strong attitude, like independent woman, da da da. Some people literally like feel like, yeah, okay, it's okay to treat this person this way. It's okay to take advantage. They can take it. They'll be okay. Like I'm not okay. I'm not okay. I haven't been okay for a very long time. I'm literally always on Instagram, always you know posting happy things, always posting about this and this and that trying to make a bad situation look good. And yet I'm literally like suffering. I'm literally dying inside. I cannot tell you the, the stress that this has caused me. I cannot tell you. How you... Yeah. And somebody said today, Pindile posted something where someone was like, oh, things are tough. That's why things are so tough right now for everybody. That's why Umunewa is doing this because she wants money from your brother. Sweetie, because she, she needs money. Yeah, I need money. Who doesn't need money? Name one person in this world who doesn't need money. Jeff Bezos is the richest man in, on, on, in the world and he still needs money. He still wakes up every day and goes and makes money because he needs money. Everybody needs money. Yes, I do need money. But that's not my reason for doing this. That is not my reason for doing this. I am sick and tired. This man is emboldened by my silence. This man has ca caused me so much emotional and mental trauma. I will be damned if I'm not going to let him continue to fuck up my finances. I'll be damned, shame. I tried my best. I tried my best to settle this the right way. I tried my best to be nice about it. I gave a and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not going to let somebody get away with my car. I saw it. I saw it in the motor. I saw it. I saw it in the motor. So, I don't know. Maybe I didn't articulate myself well, but that is my story, guys. And that's what happened. And that is the story of Upiwa Mapanga. And I'm not the only one who did this too. I know that two years ago, Ulupi posted him because he had apparently defrauded an entire foundation a president's foundation defrauded them out of Andazi, how many hundreds of thousands of friends. In fact, this guy has been posted over the years so many times, so many times. I remember there was a huge saga on Facebook. There was a huge saga with a friend of mine. Um, I'm not going to say his name, but he's a DJ um, um, slash, you know, he's into like logistics and things. Um, he's married to quite a, a popular influencer as well. Um, this was like last year, the year before. And he reached out to me and he was like, dude, this guy just knocked me out of this amount of money. Um, 
There's so many people that this guy is not. My Mingi, I remember when Lupi posted him. So many, I was so shocked to see how many people commented saying, "Yeah, me too, me too." Yamazi, he's a con artist, and his sister even then was in people's DMs going off, 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 off all the time. When are you gonna stop? When are you guys? If you spent the amount of time you spent fighting your brother's battles, if you had spent that kind of time actually encouraging your brother to do better by people, encouraging your brother to be a decent human being, we wouldn't even be in this situation. You are part of the problem because Nina Band, you embolden him because you keep telling him that he's right when he's wrong. And this is why I feel like Upiwe is oblivious to his Ndazinzayo. I don't think he understands how much this has, how much havoc this has caused in my life. This has had a ripple effect. Not being able to pay for this means I can't pay for this, means I can't have this, means I can't live like this. You know what I mean? It has a ripple effect. It has a ripple effect. You are ruining people's lives. And instead of teaching your brother, but no, I ain't swalento. This is how you treat people. This is how you do things. When you choose to go, yo, when this girl said, what abuse? Yo, she literally sent me a DM. Esitia, you're not even worth my time. Upindi, Esitia, I'm not even worth her time. Esitugum, what abuse? And I'm like, what abuse? What abuse? Yo, I think that was the trigger. I think that's when it was like, you know what? Now they're even like trying to like, like they're trying to like <laughs> act like this nigga didn't beat me. They're trying to act like this nigga. <laughs> there was a point where Upio went better and then locked me in the back seat of my car. Difunubuye police station. And I begged him. Just go 